When I found out I had to write a personal statement, a personal statement about myself, about me, about me, I said, yo, yo. No. What am I supposed to say? Welcome back to another video. It's your girl, Aaliyah Mead, and today I'm gonna be dropping some tips that you guys can use to perfect your med school personal statement. But before we get started, get comfortable, get yourself a pen and paper, and let's get to it. All right, boom, million dollar question. What is the purpose of this personal statement? I mean, as a doctor, I'm not trying to get my PhD in English, so writing is not necessarily important, right? Wrong. Your personal statement serves as a snapshot for an admissions committee to understand who you are, where you come from, what you care about, and what drives your desire to pursue medicine. Depending on the school that you're interested in, the personal statement can actually serve as a hefty portion of what's used to make the decision to give you a seat in a medical class. So it's important not to write it off as something that is minute. It is a very big piece of your application that helps you get into a medical school successfully. Now that we've covered what the personal statement is, let's now talk about those tips you can use to personalize and perfect your personal statement. Okay, tip number one, get inspired. Getting inspired is key to starting off your personal statement writing process with the spark and the energy needed to make an awesome personal statement. Personal statements can be tricky for a lot of us because it's forcing our brains to think about number one, everything we've experienced, and number two, we're then having to make the connection about what we experience to what we want to do with our lives and medicine all within a narrative all within a story on paper that makes sense but also is very engaging so in order to do all of that seamlessly it is so important that you find the inspiration to push you along through that difficult process the best way to get inspired is to actually take some time sit down look at your cv or your resume or if you're awesome and you have awesome memory and you know everything that you've done over the course of your life that's also good too and then begin to think about some introspective questions that will engage your mind in thinking about everything that you've experienced and what it means to you. So some questions that you would most likely think about would be, who am I? What have I experienced that changed my perspective on life? What are some of my passions and some of my goals that are intertwined with medicine? Are there any challenges that I face that have drastically changed my direction on life or my perspective in life? Those are the types of introspective questions that you want to use to get inspired. Now, the purpose of getting inspired is to find a spark or find some sort of excitement before you begin your writing process. I guarantee that if you read a paper where a writer was not excited about what they were writing, the paper is a thousand percent boring. Whereas if you read a paper where a writer was actually inspired and excited about what they were writing, there's a different type of emotion and tone that jumps off the paper as a reader and as a writer when that writer is excited and inspired. So getting inspired before you write your personal statement will do that for your piece of writing. For me, I was very passionate about understanding the connection between socioeconomic status and a person's healthcare experience. I took my inspiration process very personally and I was able to open up about an experience that I shared with my mother in October of 2018 where she had come in for a surgery and then ended up having some pretty life-threatening complications. And throughout that whole process, I was there with her, but I was also able to look at that situation and then relate it to other larger conversations about healthcare. So that's where I found what I experienced and how it connected to something that inspired me and that interests me. And I was able to take off with my personal statement from that. So yes, yeah, so we're gonna get more into what my personal statement sounded like as we keep moving through our next tips. Tip number two. After finding your inspiration, the next process or the next tip that I have for you guys is to begin your drafting process. Drafting for a lot of us makes us like tense up, right? Because we're all like type A personalities. We know that the drafting process is messy, ugly, and quite frankly, stressful. But drafting is so important to making a personal statement that will wow any medical school admissions committee. Drafting enables you to get the thoughts out of your head on paper into words that actually make sense and that tell a story. The first thing you have to get over is the fact that drafting will be messy. Drafting in 
inherently means that you're going to keep making different versions of what you're working on. As you're moving through your drafting process, you'll notice that your ideas will begin to gel and you will catch a flow off of that spark that you got when you were inspired. You'll be able to feel when your ideas are coming together. And so with drafting, you just gotta go at it and then go with the flow. Tip number three hook your reader. After you have went through your drafting process and you're to a point where you got all your ideas on paper, now it's time to ensure that you have one of the most important pieces of your personal statement, your introduction, your hook. Admissions committees, whether it be one person or 10 people working together, they are sifting through thousands of personal statements each year. And maybe on a given personal statement, they're spending 30 seconds to get the gist of your paper and decide if they want to read or if they don't want to read it. So you have have about maybe 10 to 20 seconds to grab the reader in and keep them for good. The tactic that I always use is to throw or immerse my reader deep into the plot of my story within the first couple of sentences of my introduction. So that way from the opening sentence of my paper you are in the paper. Then once I do that I walk them back out from being in this hyper focused moment of my plot and I make a larger statement about what I'm going to speak about in the paper. We're going to read my personal statement introduction so you can see exactly how this strategy works in action. Okay, here we go. As water and soap poured from the washcloth in my hand down my mother's back and toward the floor, her eyes and head followed. Water vapor and serenity densely packed the air. Between the trickling and splashing of water, her spirit silently expressed thankfulness and mine unconditional servitude. The shower water cut off and I enveloped her in a freshly warmed body towel. Then I organized her linen, yellow slipper socks, and toiletries on the sink top prior to stepping out of the bathroom in an attempt to honor her privacy. For my mother, this 15 minute moment marked a morale shift during a hospital stay in October of 2018. For me, this moment redecorated years of experience with a grander insight and newfound perspective on my desire to care for others. So with that intro, you guys saw how I found the most intriguing, the most unique vantage point of a scenario and I threw the reader deep into it without explanation. Most importantly, I made the reader feel as though they were in the moment with me and my mother. So this is a super duper straightforward tactic that you guys can use to craft hooks that will pull an admissions committee member into your paper and it won't let them go. Tip number four. Okay, tip number four is to focus. Personal statements, again, are narrative, but it's very easy to get lost in the sauce when you're writing. It's very easy to drown your reader in details that don't necessarily help your message. They're interesting to read, but they don't help your message. So a strategy that you guys can use is every time you take a break from your draft, come back to it and evaluate your paper sentence by sentence, paragraph by paragraph to see, is there a moment in this paper where I was slightly off focus? Is there something that I can take out or edit that may enhance my message if it wasn't there or if it was edited? So you do want to make sure that you're focused on the actual message that you're trying to convey. Tip number five, simplify your writing as much as possible. Simple is best. My best advice is to refrain from using the thesaurus too much. Of course, you want to keep it professional, but you also want to stay true to who you are and you want to stay true to the type of tone that you carry when you are traveling throughout your day and engaging with different people. Tip number six smooth transitions. When writing your personal statement, it's important to ensure that ideas and paragraphs connect to one another. It is the most difficult thing as a reader to read a page full of information and go from one paragraph to the next and it's like, whoa, how did I just get to this paragraph? When there are no transitions between ideas and sections of a paper, it's very confusing to a reader and it discourages the reader from continuing on. So when you're composing your personal statement, you do want to focus just a tiny little bit on transitions. A strategy that I use when I'm composing my personal statement and talking about one idea to the next, I always compose the paragraphs like sandwiches. The top must always connect to whatever was before it and the bottom 
must always connect to whatever's next. When you get down to your conclusion, this is where you close the entire paper. So this is gonna be the pinnacle of transitions. This is your big bang moment. You have to close the entire paper. Revisit the information that was briefly addressed in your introduction and your body paragraphs, and then make your big statement, your big aha statement about why the reader just read what they read. Tip number seven get other opinions getting other opinions on your work is going to do wonders when it comes time to put the finishing touches on your paper before pressing submit you need to at least allow three to five people if not more to read your paper and provide you with input about specific things in your paper one of the biggest things you want to ask people about is what message are you pulling from my paper because it's one thing as a writer to write and think that you're saying everything that you need to say but then when that paper is in the hands of a reader it performs on its own and so you need to be able to objectively see how your paper performs when a person is reading it and see if each person can pull away the message that you were intentionally trying to convey also ask them about any obvious grammar errors punctuation and spelling errors tip number eight we are here at the last tip i promise you you need to read your paper on your own for grammar spelling and punctuation error even after people have reviewed your work please go through it with a fine tooth comb and search for those missing periods those missing commas those grammar errors and those spelling errors there's this idea that if you're producing a paper this is representative of your work ethic so if you're a doctor let's say you're a surgeon and you're about to go operate on a patient and you're doing your work you know you're inside their body you're doing the work i'm not a doctor yet so I don't know how to give you a really robust example but you get where I'm going with it and you close them up without double checking you close them up without looking to see if you left something inside of their body or you're not seeing if you truly fix the problem they go home they have super severe complications all due to the fact that you didn't go back and check your work what type of doctor would you be Exactly. We're not even going to answer that question. So if you were to submit a paper to an admissions committee and they saw that you submitted a paper and you didn't double check your work, they are then going to identify you as someone who is not serious about the work that they put out into the world. And that is a tragic, tragic mistake to make. You have to be very thorough about the quality of your work. When it comes to your personal statement, that is your first time to show that you are very serious about the work that you put out. You don't let a period or a comma or a spelling mistake or a grammar error cause you to lose your seat in medical school. You most likely wouldn't forgive yourself and after watching this video and hearing this tip I probably wouldn't forgive you either. No but seriously check your work please. All right guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you found it enjoyable and most importantly, I hope you found these tips useful. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, comment your favorite tip and share it with anybody that you know could benefit from the same information. Do me a favor if you haven't already, go ahead and press subscribe. You will never miss another video like this one. I know you guys are going to do outstandingly well on your personal statement. I have no doubt about it. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you guys in my next one. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.